This is the second section of chapter one, algebraic expressions, and this section is on expanding brackets. Now, in this section, we're going to get questions of these types where we're expanding two brackets or even three sets of brackets. Now, if we're expanding two brackets, it's possible just to uh, use a simple method like this where we just multiply like this. Some people use smiley face or put the arrows together in a slightly different way or even do it in a grid. But it's possible to do this without a grid. However, when we come to multiplying three sets of brackets out, my suggestion would be that for the first two sets of brackets or for any two sets of brackets, we use a method that we're comfortable with to expand those brackets. Now, when we expand this one, for example, it's going to give us a quadratic. And then that quadratic then needs to be multiplied by a third bracket here. Now, we could use um, a sort of similar method where we do arrows all over the place. But I think it would be more useful and easier. I prefer to use a grid when I come to multiply that third term and I'll show you how I do that when I do the examples you don't have to do it that way but I just find that you've got so many different terms that need multiplying together it can be a bit messy so if I were to multiply those uh, first two uh, brackets there I'd get x squared and then I get minus 3x plus 2x so I'd get minus x and then minus 6 and then that bracket would then need to get multiplied by the x plus 1 at the end Look how many arrows I'm going to have to draw. So one here, um, one like this, and then I need to do another set of brackets here, and one here, and then somehow I need to get a third set of brackets or arrows like this. It can get quite messy, and it's easy to leave terms out. So I would suggest that we use a grid um, when we do those types of questions. Example four. We want to expand these expressions and simplify if possible. You often see these two things go together, expand and simplify. So part A, we have x plus 5 and x plus 2. So we should be able to do this without a grid. We can just use our arrows like this and expand. There's no negative, so um, we don't need to worry about those. So first two terms, x times by x, that's going to give me x squared. And then I'm going to have x times by positive 2, so plus 2x. And then uh, plus 5, positive 5 times by x, so it's going to be plus 5x. And then the positive 5 times by positive 2 is going to be giving me positive 10 plus 10. So that's the expand part. Then the simplify part is going to be looking for like terms. And these terms here are like the plus 2x and the plus 5x. So that will simplify to give me x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now notice that if I add 5 and 2 together, I get 7. And if I multiply 5 and 2 together, I get 10. And this is going to be useful when we do factorising quadratics, when we want to work backwards and take this quadratic and turn it back into double brackets. Part B. So we have x minus 2y, the first bracket, and then x squared plus 1 in the second bracket. So we may be using index laws as well when we expand these brackets. So first bracket like this, I'll put my arrows in. So I'll do x times by x squared. So that's x cubed using the index law. Remember that first x is like x to the power 1. Then I've got x and I'm multiplying that by positive 1. So that's just going to be plus 1x or just plus x. Then I'm going to have negative 2y times by x squared. So that'll be negative 2x squared y. Now you could write y x squared. You could write these in the other order, but uh, we tend to write things in alphabetical order, so x squared y. And then the last two, that's going to be negative 2y times by positive 1, and that just is negative 2y. 
Now here, there are no like terms. So this cannot be simplified. So that would be my final answer for this one. Actually, it'd be a good idea maybe just to highlight answers so we can uh, distinguish our answers from our working. Part C, we have x minus y all squared. Now, squaring just means you multiply something by itself. So we're going, that's exactly what we're going to do. So we'll write the bracket out twice. We'll put our arrows in like this so we can expand the brackets. So that's going to be x times by x, which is x squared. x times by negative y, so negative xy or yx. Then negative y times by x, so that's going to be negative xy again or negative yx. And then negative y times by negative y is going to be plus y squared. Can I simplify this? Yes, I can. These are like terms. Even if I had written this as yx and not xy, they're still like terms. So even if the letters are in a different order, if they're multiplied together and you've got the same letters, it's a like term. So we'll have x squared minus two lots of xy, 2xy plus y squared so that's the simplifying part done and then the last one part d we have xy and this is times by 3x minus 2y minus 4. now i could do this by putting loads of arrows all over the place um, or i could do it in a grid i'm going to show you the grid method so here's my grid. This is just going to be a multiplication grid that's just going to help me organize the multiplication of these two sets of brackets. So I've got x plus y, so I'm going to write x and y at the side because I've got two boxes going down, two terms. And then going across above each box, I'll write each of these terms here. And I've got 3x, I've got negative 2y, and I've got negative 4. And all I'm going to do is multiply what I see at the top of each box multiplied by what I see at the bottom, uh, sorry, at the side, and then put the answers in each box. So let's start with the first one. So x times by 3x squared, sorry, by 3x is going to be 3x squared. And I can work in any order. I don't need to start here and go through in, in a methodical order. I can multiply any box in and I can multiply in any order, but I'm just going to go through box by box. So this one here, this will be negative 2y times by x. So that gives me negative 2xy. And the last box on top row, I've got negative 4 here, x here, multiply them together. Negative 4 times by x, negative 4x. Moving down to the bottom row, so all of these terms are now going to get multiplied by y. So 3x times by y. That's 3xy. Moving along, negative 2x at the, uh, 2y at the top, y at the side. Multiply them together. That's negative 2y squared. And then last box here at the end, negative 4 times by y is going to be negative 4y. Now, my answer is just basically what's in all of these boxes. Now, what I'll do, first of all, is look to see if I can see any like terms. So that negative 2xy and 3xy, those are like terms. So I'm going to put those together when I write my answer out. I don't think there are any other like terms. So I'll start with the first one. I've got 3x squared. And normally what we'd do is we'd write those terms that have got the highest uh, powers first. So I'll write 3x squared. Then I'm going to write the negative 2y squared, so minus 2y squared, like this. Then I have these terms which I can put together. 3 lots of xy minus 2 lots of xy just leaves 1 lot of xy, so just xy. So I've put those two like terms together. So let me tick them off as I do them. So I've written that term out. I've written this term out. Those two have gone together. Uh, so that just leaves the minus 4x and the minus uh, 4y. So minus 4x minus 4y. 
Example 5. What we want to do is expand these expressions and simplify if possible. So let's start with A. Now, this is sort of three sets of brackets in a way, but the third bracket, well, it's not really a bracket, it's just X. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the two sets of brackets first and then just times everything by X. I think that's the easiest way to do it. Or you could multiply all the terms in one of the brackets by X and then uh, times the two together. But I'm going to times these two sets of brackets first and then multiply it all by X. So if I do that, I'll have 2x plus 3. And then what I'm going to do, that's going to get multiplied by x minus 7. So those two are going to get done first. So let's put my arrows in like this. And what I'll have is 2x squared. 2x squared minus 14x plus 3x minus 21. I've got two like terms here, so I'll simplify that. 2x squared and then negative 14x plus 3x is going to be negative 11x minus 21. So now what I'm going to do is multiply all of this by x because I've basically multiplied out the two brackets like this. So all of those terms multiplied by x, it becomes 2x cubed minus 11x squared minus 21x. Moving on to part b. Again, because I've got this x here outside the bracket, what I'm going to do, sorry, let's get the right thing here. Yeah, what I'm going to do is multiply these brackets here and then times everything by x afterward. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply out the two sets of brackets and I'm going to do that using this grid method. You don't have to do it this way, do whichever way you more comfortable with. I prefer this way. That way I don't miss out multiplications. So I've got the 5x minus 3y down the side and the three terms along the top 2x negative y and plus 4. So my job now is just to multiply what I see at the top of each box by the side of each box. So starting the first box here so that's 2x times by 5x so that's 10x squared. Whoops, 10x squared 10x squared, oh, wrong thing again. Let's get the pen, I don't want a highlighter, 10x squared. Going across the next box to the side, 5x times by negative y, so that's negative 5xy. Next box, 5x times by positive 4, so that's plus 20x or just 20x. Bottom row, I have 2x times by negative 3y, so that's negative 6xy. Negative 3y times by negative y, that's going to become positive 3y squared. Then the last box, negative 3y times by positive 4, that will give me negative 12y. So before I write the terms out, let me look to see if there are any like terms here. So I've got 5, negative 5xy and negative 6xy, so they can go together, there aren't any other like terms. So that will give me 10x squared um, plus 3y squared. Then the like terms will give me negative 11xy. Uh, so I'll tick off the ones that I've done so I don't write them out twice. So I've written these two out and these ones out here. And then uh, plus 20x plus 20x and then minus 12y. Now all of this needs to get multiplied by x. The last term or the first term at the front, so I've expanded the bracket part. So uh, what I'll do, I'll just increase each one of these terms, they increase the power of x by one. So that'll be 10x cubed plus 3xy squared 
minus 11x squared y plus 20x squared minus 12xy. So that would be my final answer. There are other ways of doing it, but this is my preferred way of doing this type of question. And last example here, three sets of brackets. So I'm going to start by multiplying out two of the brackets and I'm going to pick the first two and I would do that using a normal method. I won't write them out again. I'll just put the arrows here and write down what I get when I multiply those out. So that will be at x times by x, x squared, x times by positive 3 th plus 3x, negative 4 times by x minus 4x, and then negative 4 times by positive 3. So that's going to be negative 12. So minus 12, let's get rid of these little dots there, minus 12. Um, that can be simplified because I've got two like terms there. So that will give me x squared. Uh, 3x minus 4x is negative 1x or minus x minus 12. So now I'm going to use a grid to multiply uh, this expression here with the x plus 1. So my grid's here ready. So the x squared minus x minus 12, which I've just worked out, that's going to get multiplied by that last bracket here, x plus 1, put that to the side. So now it's just multiplying the boxes together. So x squared times by x, x cubed. Negative x times by x, that's going to give me negative x squared. And then negative 12 times by x, so that's going to be minus 12x, negative 12x. Moving down to the bottom row, everything gets times by positive 1. So actually nothing changes. So it's just x squared, negative x, minus 12. Before I write my answer out, I'm looking for like terms. Now there are two like terms here, x squared and negative uh, x squared. And there are also like terms here. So I've got the, whoops, well, that's not the best color because you won't see what's underneath. Let's try something a little bit lighter. So let's try the orange here. So we've got 12, negative 12x and negative x. And then I can write my final answer out. So that will give me x cubed, which is on its own. Now the x squared and negative x squared, that's zero x squared, they cancel out, so there's nothing there. Then negative uh, 12x minus another x is minus 13x. And then at the end, we have minus 12. So that would be our final answer here. So you should now be able to do exercise 1b on pages 5 to 6 of the textbook.